My dad was in the military for 23 years. You know, he was in the Army. Uh, I was raised in a military environment. Uh, my parents still live near and in that environment. Uh, I'm an only child, so I'm very close with them. But on the flip side of that, my own family, uh, the four children that I have, my wife, when I'm not here, that's I'm with them. Uh, I have very few hobbies. I like to read a little bit. Uh, I love golf. It's my favorite sport other than football. Uh, but uh, that's, what, that's what I'm passionate about is my family. And when it comes to anything outside of my family, it's football. You got to be tough. Uh, playing on the offensive line is not a natural uh, thing that, that you know, most kids don't go out and say, hey, this is going to be great. Let's go out and smash each other and go toe to toe and that sort of thing. So most kids throw and catch when they want to have fun. So you do have to be tough. It is a tough position. And uh, we want our guys to be rugged, have enough bulk size and that sort of thing in order to, to be a force on the line. But there's other sides of it too. We, to, we look for guys and are attracted to people who are intelligent, who can uh, think on their feet, who are alert, resourceful type people. Problem solvers, that's what we're looking for. If you take the resume of all these players on the offensive line and you, and you analyze it, uh, most of them, if not 90% of them, were multi-sport athletes in high school. I'm really looking for someone who's had to make the front end of a one and one you know, to put their team into overtime or go out there in a dual wrestling meet and win that last match in order to, to have a chance for their, their unit to win. On an emotional and mental level, we really try to develop a collective mentality so that it's very easy for the parts to all fit together because we're all going for the same goal. And I think that the, the offensive line and the way that we've tried to put it together, you'll notice that a lot of the kids are much more similar than they are different. And these are, these are solid people who really do put the team ahead of their own, their, their own interests because there really are no stats, so to speak, for linemen. Um, as similar to the quarterback, the number one thing that any offensive lineman is looking for is wins. <laughs> the days of being a single dimensional lineman are far gone. Uh, you have to be able to run block, pass block, move in space, and be an excellent inline blocker. And it's a very precise and a very specific uh, way of life. The routine and the drill, uh, as Lombardi called it, the drudgery of practice and perfection is something that they hold very much in common. They understand it. And they, uh, they take a lot of pride in doing the little things. And I've said, told people many times, if I was gonna start a business tomorrow, I would hire graduate assistants and offensive linemen uh, because no one understands detail, work, and uh, really just seeing a job through and getting it done and being creative. I think that uh, when the running back runs for yards and is successful, the offensive line specifically take a lot of pride in that. Uh, when, the, when the quarterback goes through a game and is not sacked, that group takes a tremendous amount of pride in that. And uh, they, they feel a lot of disappointment and uh, are, are you know, prone to uh, really frustration if they can't perform the way they want to. And, and because it is such a precise game, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, mistakes happen and that sort of thing, and uh, they, they really take it personally, and that's part of the thing that makes them so special, that uh, most of them uh, aren't known that, that well to the public maybe when they arrive, but we're in a situation here where I would say the majority of people uh, who are Virginia fans know many of our offensive linemen, know them by name, know them by sight when they see them, and I think it's because of the way we try to feature them Within the offense, they're able to get out in space and make plays, and they're also the, kind, the same kind of kids who will go out in the community and do a lot of things to help others. And I think that comes across with not only in the protection of the quarterback or the advancement of the runner, but also in the way they conduct themselves on a daily basis. It's pretty special. And even when you're working hard, you're still a kid at work, you know, a kid at play, and I think that those guys try to do a good job of you know, recreating and having a little fun. And on Thursdays before the games, we throw passes to them. Uh, and then they go out on Fridays during the walkthrough and take a couple minutes before we get started and kind of create their own plays and their own offense. And it's just a way for to break the monotony and have a little bit of fun. There's nowhere to run and hide in two spot. Now, you know, people may not know what two spot is, but it's a very simple drill. Uh, we line the defensive player head up on the offensive player. And the job of the, the two players to see is who can win the line of scrimmage. Oh, 
Uh, the defender's trying to defend his part of the line of scrimmage and perhaps knock us back, and our job is incomplete if we don't knock him back. Uh, a lot of players here have been formed and really broken through and become good players in that drill. And the confidence, uh, all the work that Evan Marcus does with them in the offseason is tremendous. When they can put it to use in that drill, uh, that really helps their confidence level go through the roof. And I think that's why you saw a lot of our players have a good chance to, to help us rush the ball quite a bit this year and get up to the top. I think it goes back to being on the free throw line or going out in that wrestling meet or having to stand over that putt. And to be on, on display and perform in front of your peers is an unbelievable boost to any player's confidence. And I think that uh, we try to create an environment of competition here. Uh, competition's what drives people. Uh, it's, it's really a terrific drill. I like it. And anybody who's been to our practices knows that I'm really trying to encourage the player to really show his wares. Because I'm, you know, Evan and myself and Coach Grow, we know how the player has worked in the offseason. We just want his teammates to, to show how much he's put into it by being able to knock them back. And that's the most important thing. My background, the people who've influenced me in coaching, is very clear that the job of the offensive coordinator is to get his staff to communicate, just to get people to talk. Um, it's not my offense, it's not anyone's offense, it's Virginia's offense. So the job of the coordinator really is to just uh, encourage that dialogue and to really, uh, if you will, be, be a moderator for the ideas. And you know, someone has to make the final decision, someone has to write the script or you know, type up the game plan and make the call. But I would say that most of the work and the most important work of the coordinator comes in uh, early in the week, uh, particularly Sunday when you've put your game to rest, you've evaluated the things that you did well or you didn't do well, and you say, okay, going forward, what, were the thing, what are the things that we would like to improve on or emphasize? And then take the ideas that your coaches have with the upcoming opponent and with where we need to go and try to mesh those. Uh, and that's where the title comes from and the word comes from, trying to coordinate that. We have a lot of coaches with a, an extremely strong background and are uh, very good competitors and communicators. And so we want to have a plan that's concise and that we can teach to the players, and that's what the job of the coordinator really is. This game is all about players, not plays. Uh, this is not a coach's game, it's a player's game. So everything we do is catered to the player, to the athlete. Uh, with Heath Miller, obviously, he caught the ball. Uh, when, when people couldn't defend him. And so we will do whatever, the def you know, whatever we can based on our personnel when we're superior in a facet. This last year we had two terrific running backs, and if you count Michael Johnson and Marcus Hagans, we had four. And with J Jason Snelling, we had five. So we had an opportunity to use those talents and get the ball where we wanted it to go. And you know, we are obviously looking to always take advantage of the, the talents of our personnel and really that's, uh, that dictates what style of offense we play in a particular year. We have a form, you know, we have a method, but within that we don't, we don't have any walls or barriers on what we can do, and we're always wanting to take advantage of the personnel and the talent that's on hand. You know, people will often say the offense will take what the defense gives them, and there's some part of that. But if you're a good offense, uh, if, you're, if you're really on top of your game, you're going to try to go out and dictate the action and you're going to try to find ways to create the matchups that you want to create, uh, give the challenges to the defense that you want to give them, but there always has to be some point in the game plan where you have to take the easy yards when they're there, uh, or when if, you get the, if you can create an opportunity to get the easy yards when they're there. And I think that's the delicate balance that you go into a game with. If you're very superior in a certain phase of the game and you can impose your will, that's wonderful. Uh, if you're deficient in a certain phase, how you try to you know, either overcome that or, or do what you can to, to minimize it. And that's within any game plan, when you, uh, you always want to go into the game acknowledging what we do well, never leaving that to the side, and then try to uh, mitigate or, or minimize the things that the opponent can do well. We'll, we'll have the entire game detailed uh, from the first play to the last. Uh, we will have a definite plan for the last play of the game on, on many particular yard lines. We'll have uh, for third down, for fourth down, for second down, and first down. We have a lot of different uh, contingencies, as you can imagine, because the game never flows directly on a, on a linear level. 
Uh, so the game can take on many different paths, but uh, we, we, we plan for all those things and have a lot of contingencies uh, based on how the game might go. So uh, we, there are very few calls in the game uh, that lie outside of your plan. And when you start to reach and grasp beyond what you've practiced and what your plan is, then you usually do not have success. Uh, and so we usually try to, uh, it's, been, it's our motive to uh, have the players prepared for each of the scenarios that can happen in the game. And so on an ongoing basis, uh, we're, we're planning for all those contingencies over the course of the season. And so we're, we're constantly talking to the players about how we're going to try to dictate that the game is played. And if we can do that and be successful, then um, dictating the game, then it usually goes our way. Uh, when things change and uh, contingencies change, then having the players fully prepared to change gears or to go in a different way, that's, that's our job. And that's where uh, the players uh, really have bought into how the style we've played. We can be very flexible from year to year or within game to game or series to series. The most satisfying thing for, for me as a coach is when the game is over or they come to the sideline or at halftime and the players say it's exactly how we practiced it. Uh, the, you know, the research that the coaches do, the graduate assistants, the assistant coaches, myself, Coach Grow, it's a very collaborative effort. And when the player, when we can paint a picture for the player and that player can go out and perform and come back to the sideline and say, Coach, it was exactly the way you said it would be and the way you described it and this is how they adjusted and, and we felt that we were on track there, that's very satisfying. Uh, when it's not that way all the time, that's when the work begins and, and the, hopefully the collective mentality that you've produced over time will, will help you make those adjustments.